Okay, so my skeleton of the nacelle now has the information required so I can start to extract out parts. So what I do then is I make an assembly called the nacelle assembly and I add this skeleton as a component. Okay, so watch. If I say I'd like to make a new assembly, I'll give it a name. Let's call it the WER. And so this is just a regular assembly, it's going to be brand new. When I add a, com uh, uh, a skeleton, you know, you can create a skeleton in an assembly. But I've already created one. I want to add it now, and so if I add the nacelle scale, which is there, it just throws it right in. And you see how it's nice and squared up. So if I go to my front view, it's square. When I go to my right view, it's square. Everything is nice and tidy. You see, so I've got the skeleton. I'm just going to use it now. Now, I've already created a skeleton, I mean a, a nacelle assembly. And so I'm going to open the nacelle assembly now. And in it is, and I'll unhide my layers, in it is the nacelle scale that we were just talking about. But it also now has some parts. Is that cool? So if I go to my shade, let's go shade with edges, and I'll hide Let's go, let's go and, uh, and hide the, uh, the surfs, too. You see how my assembly is starting to come together? And this is all fully associative. So if my top-level skeleton changes, all this will update. If my nacelle changes, all this will update. What's the chances that these parts are going to fit together? That's a hunt. Uh -huh, uh, pretty good. Yeah, that, it's, all, it's all pretty good. Okay, so how how are these parts created? How do they respect the skeleton so nicely? Well, let's open one. So if I open this part, it has in it one of those ECGs. And the ECG has... I'll edit its definition so you can see. When I go to the references pane and I go to the placement, this is the one that, that you need to follow, the placement matters. And so its default gets connected to, and this is where we are very careful going to place it with respect to CS1. There's CS0, CS1, because this uh, frame is going to run along this line. And so I'm going to locate this ECG with respect to this coordinate system in its skeleton. And then I'll copy in the uh, individual surf, the top and the bottom, the curve that sets up its extent, and that's the only thing I need because then I can build my part using that information. And so now I've got my part fully defined using the skeleton that was used to define it in the first place. And so the only thing required now is to take this part and put it into the assembly. You see? So now the part is independent of the assembly that it's in. Its reference, its reference is only the skeleton. Right. This gives me the ability to release the skeleton and then release the parts and then release its assembly. How important is that? Because how, how many of you guys have ever released an assembly before you release the parts that are in it? Never. That's why this is so important. You have to be able to release the parts in advance of the assembly that they're in. The only way to do that is to have the parts be independent of the assembly that they're in. Okay, so we got a couple of features that, uh, that put together this, uh, this little... Uh, this little frame, and uh, maybe we'll talk about how this model happens, but not right now. And so, because I was able to make it independent of the assembly, and because I was able to make it dependent only on a, a few features that come from the skeleton, each of these frame parts 
I was able to create very easily and quickly. As soon as I had one made, I would simply copy it, save it as, and swap the ECG with the new references, you see, allowing the next part to be built in the right place and with the right feature set quickly and easily. Leading edge spar, same idea, taking only a little bit of information from its skeleton and assembling it with respect to its skeleton. Now one more thing I want to review, and that is how cool this, this panel is. So this panel has an ECG also. Let's go to its ECG, or edit its definition, and we'll go to, again, the ECG placement. Its default gets connected to the skeleton where this panel needs to be defined. In this case, a coordinate system that is right there, number 12. So it's, in, it's on there, and it will define where that panel gets defined. The first thing that I, well, let's, let's, let's go to the uh, model player. We'll go to the beginning, and we'll play this out so you can see this happens. First is an ECG, and I'll unhide the layer so you can see it. Go to a wireframe display, and you'll see there that first is a, an ECG that copies in that surface piece that was defined in the skeleton. It's then flattened with respect to a corner. So this now is a, a flattened quilt. So now it's flat and square to its own datum planes. I then put a point set along one ed uh, two edges, and then I made a pattern of protrusions extruding between those two points, allowing me to get a, a kind of this radial array of, uh, of ribs, and then a linear array that way, and then I trim them all back from the edge with a sweep. I thicken to give some thickness to the panel, and then the whole thing gets bent back the way it started. This is all standard functionality in Creo. Yeah, these, these ribs are now formed, uh, if you will. And this, is, uh, this would be a technique that you would use if you were going to manufacture this in the flat state. And then after it's all machined, you would then bend it and then bring it to your assembly. So I just wanted to show you that. And so this, this feature set is the same sort of thing, where you have this whole feature set depends on this ECG. And so when I make one, I can then copy it and make another, and it would completely update. 